Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. At a distant research facility, the final 10% of the human genome has just been discovered. And with it, all hell has broken loose. Now, a call for help has gone out. Game time. Listen up, man. We're going in hot. If it breathes, kill it. There's something coming up behind you. It's in the sewer. We gotta go now. Ah! Evacuate, evacuate. Sir, are you okay? <laughs> so, I'll go ahead and introduce the actual main thing and be like, you know, I'll introduce myself, say what I'm drinking, pass it off to Tom. He'll introduce himself, say what he's thinking, and then he'll pass it off to you. You'll introduce yourself, so on and so forth, and then you'll introduce the movie. Okay. Do I, have to say what I'm, do I have to say what I'm drinking? Because I'm drinking Diet Wild Cherry Pepsi right now, and I don't think that's very, uh, you know... It's just one of my favorite podcasts do, does that, but they share a drink. And since yeah. we can't physically do that, you could you could uh, pronounce yours Leco <laughs> if you want. Hopefully, like, well, hopefully one day we can get this to the point where we get sponsored and we can say like you know today's movie is sponsored by Beer Fifty Two. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. use product code Fire Pit and you'll get a free case of craft beer. Yeah, right. <laughs> Doing so really helps the channel. <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you hear. And remember, a <laughs> welcome to the fire. Fuck, you didn't edit that out. <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello. Welcome to the fire pit, um, where we like to watch movies and drink alcohol, some of us and stuff. I'm Josh. People call me Q. My uh... British name is Reginald. <laughs> Reginald. Thank you for that. <laughs> And I guess I'll pass it on to the human burp, or Tom, as we occasionally call him. Thank you for that, by the way. You're, you're welcome. I'm Tom, uh, British name Thompson. Gonna, I bring the class. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fart into the, my mic, but then I might have to smell it. <laughs> this podcast is off to a great start. Isn't it always? Sorry. Sorry. I had to interrupt you since you were a dick. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't burp. No. Yeah, we're waiting Tom. for you to do your... I, 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 did, I did my introduction. Waiting for Dan to do his. Right. Well, I'm Dan, British name Nigel. Yeah, you need to watch uh, that episode of It's Always Sunny that I shared because <laughs> they basically got to go in and watch a uh, screener for the new Thunder Gun movie that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, It was funny as shit because they all were sitting there talking to somebody after the movie to get their thoughts and stuff on it. <laughs> Everybody would have their own thing. Like, listen to them talk about that movie kind of reminded me of this. <laughs> Uh, speaking of this, so we decided on uh, a little bit of doom tonight, right? Yeah. So hold on. A I guess that was the consensus. That's okay. I just rewatched Walking Tall earlier this week, and I'm kind of glad we're going with Doom instead. Was Walking Tall is not a bad movie, but Doom isn't. Well, Doom's a bad movie. This is a bad film. Oh, but, oh, but Doom is a fun film. Kind of falls into the um, Mortal Kombat one in the realm mm-hmm. of of video game movies. It's a good video game movie, but it's still a bad movie. Like it tried to follow the video game a little bit, but it's still ultimately no. <laughs> wait, 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 guys, let me go drain the lizard real quick, and let's we'll get oh, started. Okay. On this, okay? Okay, so this is the part of the podcast where we talk shit about Dan while he's Yeah, not yeah, here. yes, yes. Um, this is the part yeah. where it's just me and you. Mm-hmm. We, we ought to do like times like this whenever somebody has to leave. We ought to do our own like commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> this Dan Piss Break is sponsored by Cherry Coke. <laughs> we sponsor your Piss Break because we taste like piss. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to lie. We use it in the ingredients. Yep, that's the key to our flavor. We piss right in the mash. Mash like making beer, you ask? No, no. It's literally <laughs> garbage. We just piss in garbage, and we just collect what comes out. You want cherry on it? We think there's cherries in there, too. We really don't know how we got that flavor. It happened in the mid-'80s. We just kept going with it. Enjoy right. Cherry Coke today with your movie. <laughs> Sponsor code Fire Pit. <laughs> Entering that on checkout will give you a swift kick in the nuts because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> cherry Coke. Diet Cherry Coke. At least we hope so. 
There might be sugar in there. What do you care? You'll believe anything that's on the box. <laughs> and I'm back. Hey! We decided while you were gone that uh, whenever somebody leaves, we have a uh, we pause for a quick commercial break. So <laughs> you, you missed down, our... Does it itch down there? And I mean <laughs> down there tonight. We are watching Doom, the... 2005 movie not the um well this movie is not very good either but the uh, 2019 one is just god awful it makes this one look like shakespeare anyways this movie is a 2005 based on the video game from id software but unfortunately it kind of sort of bears more of a resemblance to the doom 3 game at the time as opposed to doom 1 and 2 so it's more like a team of space marines go up to check out what's going on on Mars instead of one lone badass super soldier, which is what the Doom games mostly follow. And that's part of the reason why this movie is not that great, because the fans of the video game didn't care for it because it wasn't a lone badass super soldier guy who goes around and kills a bunch of demons and zombies and whatever else the video game was. So it's not as good as it could have been. But as far as video game movies go, it's not terrible. Uh, it's in that Mortal Kombat realm where it's kind of a fun movie for a little while, but it's it, it's just not not good. Not Mortal Kombat Annihilation. That falls into the same category as Doom Annihilation 2019. Funny how that works, in which <laughs> the movies are just terrible, and the less said about them, the better. Do not watch them. And if you have to watch them, pirate them. Do not give them any of your money. <laughs> Tom, pirate. edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the um? Well, so what's the connector for this film? What's connecting us? Uh, well, last week we watched um, the rundown, which starred Dwayne the Rock. Can you smell what he's cooking, Johnson? Actually, um, keep it, remember this was t- the early two thousand. He was only known as the Rock. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, actually, I think this is one of the first movies where he was credited as Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Mm-hmm. Think, was that that, think, that was a weird transition period? Yeah, he was still under contract with the WWE. WWF at the time, so he he used the obviously he would use the Rock name because that was what he was known for, who he was known for, and also the WWE had produced her credit on a couple of his movies. But anyways, he was in a, he was in the last movie we watched, The Rundown, and he's one of the stars in this movie. The movie also stars a Carl Urban, um, fresh off of the Lord of the Rings trilogy that he was in. Still, kind of, sort of finding his footing in Hollywood at the time. Was well, this was b- after uh, Chronicles of Riddick too, wasn't it? Because didn't that just come out in like two thousand four? I think so. I think so. I know it's it's I after Lord of the Rings. Summer two thousand four, two thousand three. Was it two thousand two? Two thousand three or two thousand three? Two thousand four? Two thousand five? So this came out the same year as uh, Return of the King. So yeah. Yeah. This, so Carl Urban was. Quite popular because of the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, his he was uh, who is he in those movies? He's uh, I know the names on the tip of my tongue. Well, yeah, one of the robot uh, guys. Or yeah, I know he's yeah he's um Boromir's brother, I think. No, right? no, 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 no. No, that was Faramir. Faramir. That's Faramir, and that's not who Carl Urban played. He's Yomer, <laughs> Aemir, or Yomer, or whatever. And. Lord of the Rings. Good God. Oh, okay. You guys are a bunch of nerds. That's nerds. the guy who also I, called him out. <laughs> well, if this thing ever goes live or on YouTube, the Tolkien fans are just going to scream at us in the comments. Uh, oh, oh, here, I got one. I got something. I got something. I got something. Tolkien's underrated. Brandon Sanderson's the way to go. Come on, people. There. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Because <laughs> I know you will. Email them to... <laughs> Send all inquiries to Josh because, uh, you know, he's, he's the one that's stirring the pot and angering one of the many religions of the internet. Dan, Dan, we can both agree this is Tom's fault. It is. And Tom's okay. email will be listed oh. below after the end of the podcast. No, Do just credit his, his email this. address. Is my, it's... No, oh, no. So, <laughs> so Carl Urban. It also starts the... Uh... <laughs> We'll get back on track here. Uh, yeah, so it starts Carl Urban, popular after playing Yelmer in the uh, Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, especially, this is shortly after, this is right after Return of the King came out. And also, obviously after The Two Towers. So he's still kind of, at the time, still kind of finding, he went on to have, he's, he's gone on to have a pretty good career. I mean, he was Dread in the net, in the latest Dread remake. That was what, um, 2012? Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he's also Dr. McCoy in the rebooted Star Trek movies. It also stars the classically sure. sexy Rose and Pike. This is the movie that came out after she was the latest Bond girl in the god-awful 
James Bond Die Another Day movie. That oh was God, just yeah. terrible. But she was one of the bright spots of the movie. But, oh, oh, that's still a bad film. Yeah, that was a really, really bad movie. But, you know, she's she's gone on to have a pretty good career in Hollywood. I think she was even in Gone Girl, which was critically acclaimed. Oh, is that who she's from? Yeah, yeah, she's from Gone Girl. She's she playing was, Gone Girl. Was she the wife? She's, or... she's the wife. She was the wife that faked her death and oh, wow. did all that stuff. Yeah, she's a really good actress. And she was also in... One of the Flash of the Titans movies. I think it was the sequel, Wrath of the Titans, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, all three of the, the the name actors in this movie, the three starring actors, Rock, Urban, and Pike, have all gone on to have really successful careers in Hollywood. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, kind of amazing considering this movie was both critically panned and it was a box office bomb. And it's become a little bit of a cult classic now, but not so much. It's still not revered. It's not like one of those, oh my God, oh, no, I'm so it was such an underrated gem at the time. No, it wasn't, people. This movie was no. bad. It deserved yeah, all it was. It was not good. It's not a good movie. It's, so. it's one of those movies people look back on and they're like, I didn't hate it or yeah. I really hated it. Because I remember, Tom, you were there. Remember the discussion we had with Wolf at our old job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he loathed this movie. He was like, that movie was terrible. Was the, guy, oh. the guy's name was Wolf? Or are we talking about the Wolf movie with Jack Nicholson and Michelle? No, no. This, uh, our okay. friend name, his name was Jeff Wolf. So, I know, um, he was not wrong. I, about this this movie, no, no, he, but it's one of those movies you can enjoy at the same time, you know? Is it, I call these types of movies, I call them McDonald's movies. It's kind of enjoy it when I'm there. Sometimes I have a good burger, sometimes I have a bad burger. But overall, it keeps me alive, and I'm just not in a hurry to go back when I leave. But I do know that at some point down, some point in time down the line, I'm going to go back. So <laughs> this is one of those. Yeah, but like McDonald's, some things you order just they wind up wind up paying for them later on. And that uh, this is a uh, no, that's this Taco is Bell. This isn't a Taco Bell movie. This is a McDonald's movie. Transformers Four is a Taco Bell movie because I'm still paying for that one long after I've digested it. Well, no, 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 no. A movie that, you know, hurts, you watch it, but you realize you don't like watching it. Like, I would almost call Superman Returns a Taco Bell movie because every time I watch it, I like it less. Or Man of Steel, even. Yeah. Oh, Man of Steel, but definitely, yeah. You hate yourself after you watch it. You're like, oh, why did I do this? Man of Steel. It was garbage when I saw it the first time. It's not changed at all. Dan, do we want to tell him how much he enjoyed that movie after we watched it? I don't know. I I'm, not gonna, we were, I'm, we not gonna all... I'm not going to beat him too hard for that one because I'm kind of in the same boat. With Man of Steel. Oh, don't, trust me. I I don't think that Man of Steel is a great movie by any means now. Yeah. But uh, when it came out, I absolutely loved that movie. I won't same, deny that. Same here. But I think I, I I'm the same way though about Superman Returns. Like I really loved that movie when it first came out, and then so did I. But he was theme. just trying to say how he hated it from the beginning. I recall how we we drove to uh, St. Louis the day after. Oh yes. And sure all we talked about was Superman. All day. Yeah, we should have been recording that. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but no, I actually kind of feel the same way about Man of Steel as I, uh, that I feel about Superman Returns. It's a collection of good scenes with an incoherent story. Mm-hmm. Uh, both Superman movies, in my opinion, are are that. They're the scene, the special effects are awesome. The scenes are good. It has moment. Both movies have moments that remind me that I'm a kid and I want to go wrap a towel around my neck yep. and run around the house and say I'm Superman. Um, but then at the end of the movie, it's kind of like you ate too much and you're just like, oh, it's like eating, like, it's like eating mall Chinese food. It looks good when you're there. The free sample was amazing. And then when you finally ate it, you ate it, you were full, you felt good. But by the time you got to go home, you got to sit on the shitter for a while. Or as we (laughs) already said it. It's a Taco Bell film. I, I almost, I almost liken it to eating Jello. It, it tastes good while I'm doing it, but there's nothing there. So <laughs> when it's old, when the when the Jello cup is empty, did I eat anything at all? Mm-hmm. You know, it's Schrodinger's Jello. In there. <laughs> so, no substance, yeah. Yeah, do it. And and actually, speaking of movies without substance, we're watching Doom tonight. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Here's a segue for you. <laughs> segue. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so speaking of movies with no substance. Uh, but anyways, that's just a little bit of trivia about the movie. Mm-hmm. And then the, some of the stars. And we will take one of the three stars. Probably not The Rock, since we've done The Rock two weeks in a row now. But we will probably take uh, either Carl Urban or Rosamund Pike and probably find a movie with them in it next week and watch a movie with one of those two actors in it. If you guys want to go for a third Rock movie, we can. But I think we've done two Rock I movies. I think the maximum we could limit out. Our, our movies like that unless there's really no options you get one springboard so you always come back to them if you find a way to loop back into them but uh, i think we should just maintain that you can't do it twice off the same actor from a movie i'm okay with unless that. there's like no options again like we always say loosely written rules yeah okay um i did want to go back and do a little bit of correction on some information that i had i had my dates way off lord of the rings it was 2001 2002 and 2003 so he was two years off of uh 
Return of the King. 2004, his bi- or Carl Urban's big movie was uh, Chronicles of Riddick, but he was also in the Jason Bourne movie that also came out in 2004. Yeah. Wow. So, and, well, pr- production for this movie did start in 2004, so I imagine he was probably cast in this movie off of the back of Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. Rock was still in his early Hollywood career. He had done The Mummy Returns, like we mentioned last week. Uh, he did The Scorpion King, and then he started to do movies like... This is one of his first uh, missteps. He had a couple of missteps early in his career, and he started to go the way of Hulk Hogan, wrestler-turned-actor, instead of, you know, The Rock wrestler turned actor i um, slightly disagree i wouldn't say this was a misstep because his character up until uh, we'll talk about it more after we see no, it, yeah, but i yeah. remember his liking his character up until the end i thought he originally but, in this film if i'm if i recall correctly he was cast as carl urban's character yes but he wanted he read the script and wanted the, the role of sarge more than he yes. wanted urban's character he obviously at that that obviously shows that he had he was already developing a little clout in Hollywood because he was able to go through and say that. What new-ish actor would uh, have the balls to say, no, nah, I don't want this character, I want this one. So, <laughs> yeah. Of course, I think at this point he'd already been, like, headliner for, what, three major movies? Three or four? Yeah, well, this is after, I, I, I want to say it's, I know it's after The Mummy Returns. Is it oh, after yeah. Scorpion? Mummy Re- I think Scorpion okay, King okay, was 2004? Two, 2000, two, 2002. 2002. Was it really? Yeah, 2002. So, okay, so Mummy Returns, I think, is... Yeah, 2001 was Mummy Returns, 2002 was The Scorpion King. 2003 was The Rundown. Yeah, so this is after The Rundown. And it, okay, is this his I, first movie? No, this isn't his first movie. The Rundown is... No, first movie know. after his first, after The Rundown. Yeah, because I think Walking Tall was... No, that 2000, was 2004. 2004. That was 2004. 2004. So he did Walking Tall right before this movie then. Yeah, so he's he did Walking Tall, and then he's he's doing this film. And well, well, One of us needs to be responsible for having the actor's IMDb pages up whenever we uh, <laughs> do this. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing now. So, anywho. He was in uh, Be Cool also in 2005. That was a summer movie. Right. Walking Is Tall it? in 2004, Rundown in 2003. So he'd been in two, three, four five movies by that point yeah so he was establishing himself definitely establishing himself and and honestly i I kind of agree with tom's assessment is i wouldn't necessarily call this a misstep it's it on paper this this should have been a a bona fide hit i I think if it and honestly it might have been a bigger hit if it wasn't a doom movie but the fact that it's it carried the name doom and the fans had a certain expectation going into the movie because of the, the way the the video games had been but unfortunately this is when doom wasn't quite as popular as it used to be either so yeah. this, this is after because doom 3 wasn't as big a hit as dooms 1 and 2 were and then doom kind of fell by the wayside as a franchise until recently with the doom 2016 video game reboot which went back to its roots of being a lone badass super soldier mowing down demons with reckless abandon. Well, yeah, it, it was, wasn't like Doom 3, somebody made the flashlight mod that just got rid of all the scary aspects of the game. <laughs> it, what? That, yeah, there was that. And also Doom 3 kind of makes it more of a survival horror kind of a game. And Doom 3 also introduced it to being more of like a space Marines going up to investigate what happened at Mars. And they found out the, I don't, it, it tried to add way more story than it needed. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. this movie followed the Doom 3 formula <laughs> and not the Doom 1 and 2 formula. Formula. But Doom 1 and 2 is where the bread and butter was. So this film was a Go victim ahead. of it was too early to get that nostalgia crest, but too late to really ride the high of the good Doom, yeah. good Doom games. I would go that far. I mean... Uh... It also had the stigma of being a video game movie, and most video game movies yep. are awful. That's, awful. that's just pure science. Oh, mm-hmm. come on. Super Mario Brothers was an amazing piece of cinema that will forever be remembered. Tom edit that part out. Josh is batting a thousand. He's defending Super Mario Brothers and he's insulting Tolkien fans. This is going to be great. Hey, Josh, what are your opinions on Serenity? Oh, that entire series is garbage. <laughs> We've pissed off the entire internet now. Yeah. All he needs to say now is Ray is the best thing about the new Star Wars trilogy. Isn't she? <laughs> no. I'll be the villain this time. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. We're Doom, no, everybody. No, Doom. No one's going to listen to us now. <laughs> hey, hey, that's that's the... Uh... <laughs> Can we watch this film before Josh is alive? <laughs> yeah, let's watch the movie so we can have a few moments of silence so that Josh isn't talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
And welcome back to yet another episode of Fire Pit. I am, of course, your interspersal and commercial break host with the most Tom. And the most of it is, well, we don't have any commercial breaks to break to. But we'd like to still give a shout out to the brews that made this possible for you. For my end, it was Land Grant. Fantastic little brewery here in Columbus. Across the bridge, you can't really miss them. And from Josh's end, we've got New Belgium. Um, specifically the Fat Tire. Uh, got him through this, it'll get you through this. If it doesn't, well, we don't know what to tell you. It's doom. It took a lot to get us through, so probably be the same for you. Anyways, I will let you get back to it. Thanks for sticking around this long. Hopefully you make it to the end. Until then, good luck. And for, for the record, I, I do like Serenity and Firefly. And, and I do not like the character Ray, but I think Daisy Ridley is amazing. Well, gentlemen, that was uh, Doom 2005. That was... A movie. <laughs> that was definitely a film. After having seen it, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, that was definitely a movie. Well, they got that part right. They uh, they figured out how to point a camera and turn it on and record. This, I liked this film the first... Well, no, I should qualify. I was disappointed in this film the first time I saw it, and... I'm sorry, guys. I chose this film. Okay, they, they don't all have to be gems. Like I said, this we, we knew going in this wasn't going to be a good movie, but this is part of the, the bridge that we're building with the, you know, the different movies that we're watching. And I still maintain that it's, as far as video game movies go, it's a decent video game adaptation, but it's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, no, no, no. It's better than Mario Brothers. It's better than Mario Brothers. It's better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation, although that's a really low bar to clear. <laughs> um, Dude. Was it like the entirety of the Sub-Zero scene was included in the trailer? And then you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, Sub-Zero still got more plot in this movie. And you're like, there, the fuck is Sub-Zero? A, there's a YouTube video that explains what happened with that movie far better than I ever could. But, yeah, it all boiled down to a lot of people that didn't know what they were doing were making all the decisions. Yeah. Clearly. Because uh, the first Mortal Kombat film, while also not great, is a pretty decent video game movie. And it's a pretty decent little martial arts kung fu movie. It's got... You know, it, it ticks a lot of the boxes that people of that genre really like. You know, it's got the mysticism yeah. and, and all that good stuff. Your yeah. soul is mine. Yeah, and it, you know, the martial arts is really good. The fight choreography is really good. Special effects were pretty good for the 90s. And it's, a killer soundtrack. Yeah, it had a great soundtrack. It ticked a lot of boxes, and it was a mm -hmm. pretty good video game movie. And the movie mm -hmm. does have like 20, the opening 20 minutes is just introducing all the characters. This is what they do. This is their story. And here's what they do. And then when you get to about the 25 minute mark is when the, the tournament starts. So they actually start getting into the fighting and into the action and into the story. This movie yeah. took 45 fucking minutes before we saw the first creature from Doom. And then it was like another 20 minutes before the action started. Yeah. yeah. So it's like like we were almost we were almost halfway through the movie because I mean what's the movie's runtime? Oh, okay, Hour almost 52. two hours. So we were over ha almost halfway through the movie. Before we even started to get to the meat of the plot, that's what not even that. Just the pacing, man. It was just well, that's slow. what hurts. That's what hurts this movie. When the action starts. It's good. I I enjoyed almost all the action scenes in this movie because mm -hmm. it's Doom. Like that's what Doom is supposed. Doom's an action game. It's not fucking Animal Crossing. It doesn't. It's not supposed to take forever to get to anything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is yeah. ironic because right now Doom, the, the latest Doom's biggest competitor is Animal Crossing. So that's what hurt it. And and I I go back to the Mortal Kombat comparison is that you can say what you want about Mortal Kombat, but it, it, they tried to stay true to the game. This one just tried to do too much. This one no, tried it, to be aliens. It tried to be aliens, dude, and that's not no, what Doom no, yeah, is. That's all it, was. Yeah. It, was just, it was just like aliens reskinned, but reskinned with a shitty texture pack, you know? Like, you they know. Should, what they should have done for this movie was literally keep it up to the point where they go to Mars. And then fucking hit the ground running. Yeah. You know? Like, if they would have done that, it would have been a much better film. I think that's the problem, though. The people who were in charge of making sure this film got made didn't understand the games or the source material. It's Mars and the gates of hell open. So he said, that's dumb. It's got to be zombies. I think Josh is right. I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure they changed it from hell to being zombies because they didn't want to risk pissing off like religious groups because religious groups at the time were already going on and on and on about the, the mm -hmm. game anyways because the game oh, shit. Was... remember how yeah like with with uh columbine and then everything that happened it's like as soon as like this movie if you would have made it from hell 
like legitimate hell. Look at the shit that uh, Event Horizon gets shit from having referencing actual hell. Yeah, I forget. Probably uh, they all. I don't do. recall anything directly because that was like '97 when that movie came out, so the internet wasn't as uh, full. Yeah. Of, you know, and you're not wrong though. You're not. Did someone in the boardroom for this film was thinking that? But this movie doesn't work because they didn't quite get Doom. It's I, I understand like why they have to. Okay, why they had to add other Marines other than just the lone Doom guy. Because for movie's sake, as opposed to a game, you kind of want those red shirts to get slaughtered so that it establishes the threat of the bad guys, you know? And aliens did the same thing. You know, they had all these badass space marines, and then most of them get killed in the initial conflict with the aliens to establish... Game over, man. Game over. uh, To establish the aliens as this big threat. I understand that part, and I, I agree with it for the most part. I just, um... How they do it just sucks. Yeah. This was just generic sci-fi horror with a video game name attached to it. And that that is so off. true. It's like they took an already existing screenplay and they're like, how can we adapt this to throw the title Doom on it? Yeah. They're zombies in space. Got the license to Doom. Just uh, change it to uh, Mars. Mars. And, uh, yeah. They're on Mars. Yeah. And just throw the Doom title on it. Yeah. yeah. And also, this one bore a closer resemblance story-wise to the third game, which isn't as popular or as remembered as the first two. And it's also not nearly as fast-paced as the first two in the current reboot, the the 2016 versions of Doom. Like, Doom itself is fast-paced, heavy metal, balls-to-the-wall action, Mm -hmm. non-stop. It's uh, just not a game that's meant to have... 40 minutes before you meet the bad guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like an hour out of a two hour. It's half of your movie is building up. Yeah. No fucking. You have 15 minutes in a doom movie. Like just to give you, you guys may not have played it yet, but in the new, the, the 2016 doom, the game starts with, your character is strapped to some kind of a table, naked, and two imp demons walking towards him, and he grabs the head of one, slams it on the table, and breaks its skull, throws mm-hmm. it off to the side, gets up off the table, and puts on his doom armor, and then immediately begins to slaughter everything that he sees. Like, there's no 20 minutes of expedition. There's not even a goddamn tutorial. There's just literally, here's things, kill them. Yeah. Go! Go! <laughs> Well, that's the thing, though. We we do we're looking at this from uh, a lens where that sort of gameplay, that sort of doom, is back in vogue. You have to remember at this point when this film was made, we're talking about the doom that was made. That kind of game had played out. There had been so many doom clones yeah, beforehand you're, you're that we wrong. were tired of doom. We like we wanted something new, so well, that just, was kind of vibration. Said, yeah, or I think you said before the movie started that this movie was kind of like in that weird in between stage where it's not it hasn't been around long enough to get the nostalgia pull, but it's kind of out of the zeitgeist, so it's not yeah. it doesn't have enough mainstream appeal yet. Yeah, because Doom came out in what ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. So yeah, it was it wasn't even ten years old when this movie was made. Yeah, so at this point, like it was like ugh, Doom, just ugh, can I just have a plot to something not just chainsaw probably the way this film was inspiring itself and probably why when we at least when i first saw it i liked it up until the end with the first person scene which we established i hate it because one the rocks turn in the original theatrical cut came out of nowhere for me it's like he was cool he was badass he was rational and then he's like i'm bad kill all the people and then he was captured and became big bad at the end i will that admit that did come out of nowhere in theatrical release pissed me off so much and then like the first person scene was just like rush to the end that's how it came off to me i know the internet and you guys all disagree with me but that was shit I can see where the scene, the first person scene's a little pandering. You know, it's, oh, it's, it's definitely it's, pandering. It's, it's definitely pandering. It's, pandering. it's, it's, it's one of those pandering. things. It's like uh, the extra loop on the roller coaster. It wasn't necessary for the ride, but it was fun. We enjoyed that. You know, like the, the first person scene was definitely not necessary, but it's like, dude, Doom is a first person game. We have to have a first person scene. What yeah. point are we going to have a first person scene in this movie? Well, we built up this whole Gene 24 thing. Why don't we have him inject this at the last possible second, air quotes. And then we have the scene from there to where he meets the final bad guy, be first person. Okay, that works. Do that. 
if this film had been made 10 years later during the 3D craze, that would have been the 3D scene. Oh, yeah, oh, for my sure. God. Look Dude, at it nail on the head. Yeah. Like said, it, and Hollywood was in a very weird place in the early 2000s. Well, uh, just like we I mentioned last week during our watch of Rundown, Hollywood was looking for the next Schwarzenegger and the next Stallone and the next big box office draw, the next big action star. Yeah, the, the next Stallone and, like, yeah, Schwarzenegger. Like, and then, yeah, they were looking for that next big tough guy, sir, and they were definitely molding The Rock to be that. Yeah, he was definitely on a route to do that. Yeah. It's amazing that he didn't fall into the made-for-TV route or just go straight back to wrestling. He almost he did. you got to keep in mind, he did what? He made some duds, for sure. Tooth Fairy almost... Oh, Jesus. Thank God he got out of that contract with the mouse, because... Yeah, could have been... No, it was well, Game Plan in 2007, which was two years after this, and then uh, The Tooth Fairy in 2010, because he had a three-movie deal with Disney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was 2010, Faster, was that movie that he came out with. I don't remember that one. That yeah, was the one with the uh, Chevelle, where che the Chevelle was the big movie. Like, he got done with his Disney contract, and, like, literally the first thing he did in that movie is walk in this building and shoot a dude in the face. Because, let's see, prior to that one, he was an unaccredited air marshal in You Again. Why Did I Get Married to Unaccredited, Tooth Fairy, Planet 51, Race to Witch Mountain, Get Smart, and The Game Plan. So that was his three movies. The Game Plan, Race to Witch Mountain, and The Tooth Fairy. How is he still a Hollywood box office draw? He got a three-movie deal with Disney. Come on, Tom. That's not saying much. The mouse chews you up and spits you out. He survived Disney. Well, he survived because he, he's not an idiot, though. He's a smart businessman. I think after he made those duds, he made some pretty good decisions as far as where his career would go next. He saved the Fast and the Furious franchise. That franchise oh, yes. is definitely on its way to direct. And he had a lot of really good uh, cameos, like the other guys. Yeah. Let's see. He did Faster in 2010. Guess what he did in 2011? Dan, you got one shot. Fast and the Furious. Boom. Yeah, like he doesn't sh even show up in the Fast and the Furious movies until the fifth goddamn movie in. But, but Tokyo Drift wasn't very good. And then they came out with The Fast and the Furious, which did modestly, but that's mostly because it was like, Vin Diesel's back. And yeah, that was the big thing. Of, that was a big draw. Vin Diesel and Paul Walker are back. Yeah, and most of the other cast from the, the first one, too. Like, they brought back Michelle Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, but that, that was the one she was killed off in. Well, but, Michelle Rodriguez dying in a film is like Sean Bean dying in a film. Yeah, it's that's going to happen. Yeah. And especially a movie like Fast and the Furious. She going to be back. <laughs> Poor but, loose, Josh. So, and then, um, but almost all the major players from the first one came back to do the sequel, uh, The Fast and the Furious. So then it gets modest numbers. But then after that movie, you're kind of wondering, well, okay, where do they go from here? Enter The Rock. Yeah. And, and now Vin Diesel's got someone that he can play off of. And the fact that they don't really get along all the time kind of adds to that chemistry on screen that they don't really like each other. He, he just he, he made some smart decisions, and now he is a bona fide movie star. It's still hard to believe that Fast Five came out in 2011. Guys, the Rock has been a part of Fast and the Furious series for nine years. You got to think about it. He doesn't even show up until the fifth movie. And he gets a spinoff movie of his character. Granted, it wasn't as successful as he probably would have liked it to have been. I thought it did really well. It did okay. It, it didn't it, do great. The movie made almost $200 million domestic. I don't think anybody would How? count that as a not a success outside of Hollywood. What was the budget for the film? Let's look at how much it cost to make the film. I don't think that was released. It made almost $100 million opening weekend. That's way more than I thought it was going to make. I'm not going to lie. I thought that film tanked hardcore in the box office. Wow. So, oh, anyways, uh, to take <laughs> I, I want to go back on the how did Rock get so big. He did yeah. another thing. He went back to wrestling for a little while. It was yeah. huge. Oh, and then he had, well, it ended up being twice in a lifetime, but he had the once in a lifetime match with John Cena at WrestleMania. And that ended up being one of the highest bought WrestleManias in history, if not the mm. highest at the time. I would say that that definitely helped his movie career out a little bit. Like going back to wrestling, being this bona fide star again. I, I really do think he's a, he's, he's a star. He's got a friend. I, the best I ever heard about him was actually Josh. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember what movie we went to go see. It might have been we saw a Hobbs and Shaw trailer, actually, Josh. <laughs> and, but you said, I can see you're not a wrestling fan or you're not to the same degree that Tom and I are or were. But you said that I never followed Rock when he was a wrestler, but I can see why he was so popular because he has a presence. Mm-hmm. He, just has he does. A presence he really does. Him. You just you have to watch him. You have to see him. You got to see what he's doing next. It's like '90s, right? I was never into sports, so but I knew who Michael Jordan was, right? Oh, everyone so like, did. Yeah, yeah. It's like it goes with the same formula for The Rock. It's like I didn't watch wrestling, but I knew who The Rock was. Yeah, yeah. When he came, he left wrestling for a little bit and came back for one year. And for that one year, it was right before WrestleMania 19, he was a heel again. He was Hollywood Rock and. He went into Canada and he said something about their hockey team there. And the rumor is to this day, that arena is still booing him. (laughs) (laughs) But Rock was so good. Rock, he was, that's why he is as big as he is. Yeah. And that's how he was able to make a film like this watchable, at least for me back then. Um, <laughs> for me right now, if you guys are making this made this film watchable. I'm not gonna lie. That and the cool, refreshing taste of Land Grant Starcaser Black IPA with coffee. <laughs> if not for yeah, is that the just... one that you so loose that it's like a Niagara Falls right out of your asshole? No, no, no. This is the one that gets, this gets you like brick hard, son. Nothing to the like the Great Wall of China. Ain't Mongolian oh, of my any goodness. kind coming through. You that will one. have to forget. Give me for saying that. Oh my no, God. No, you're thinking of, in that. Yo, no, you're thinking of your flat tire right there. <laughs> that flat tire make you just go kathunk, kathunk, kathunk right to where you need to go, which is to the bathroom, is where I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> and on that note, gentlemen, I got nothing else to say about Doom except I've, I'm pretty sure I saw almost all of those sets on every direct to DVD, straight to Netflix, uh, sci fi, horror, knockoff. Uh, kind of like how uh, after uh, Starship Troopers came out, the armor for every single sci-fi military for the next 15 years was the same. Yeah, pretty yep. much. Not, not calling you out, Firefly, but you, you're, you're guilty. You're guilty. <laughs> I've just been looking at um, Carl Urban's um, filmography. We might not be using him as our jump-off point, which, again... Considering he was the protagonist of this film, he wasn't in much of anything before this of like to make you say, yeah, he's a he's a lead actor. He was in um, Chronicles of Riddick and Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but even in Lord of the Rings or he wasn't like a main character. He was in Lord nope. of the Rings. After that, really, his biggest roles were Pathfinder. It was that one, the film that came out to one theater. In the I remember, I confused that one with Outlander, the not movie that the women seem to love nowadays. That I can't get past episode four. I don't know. That <laughs> I haven't even watched. No, no. Chris is like, hey, hey, it has time travel. It's just about this one woman who travels back in time, and she falls in love with a uh, Scottish guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, it could be interesting. I'm like three episodes in, I'm like, oh, my God, kill me now. She's like, do you care if I keep watching? Please. Yeah. Please. Do you care if I leave the room? <laughs> it's one of those situations where I tell Katie, there's three TVs in this house. Why do I have to watch this, too? When this movie came out, I would have been like, oh, it's the dude from Chronicles of Riddick. But we got Dread. I mean, we got Lena Headey in Dread. Oh, shoot. We do have. Yeah. Wait, what movies was she in, though? 300. She was mostly who? Lena Headey. She's in 300. She is. We get Gerard Butler. Fuck, we'd get uh, not just Gerard Butler, but we'd also get... Fuck, I can't think of the guy's name. Oh, Michael Fassbender. Okay. Uh, But I I also suggest we could go Pathfinder, which is Carl Urban, and go Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown could get us to Starship Troopers or... Well, shit, Clancy Brown's been in a hundred goddamn fucking things. Yeah, dude. Forever. Mm-hmm. Clancy Brown and Michael Ironside, dude. We're, we're set for life. Okay, so yeah, I should have scrolled up a little further. We've got Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness and Star Trek Beyond. Heck, we've got um Thor Ragnarok. I forgot it was in that film. Shit, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the but but well, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to avoid the MCU. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to I'm trying to avoid like movies that are 
super super mainstream i, I mean I, we can if you want if you guys want to do an mcu movie or if you guys want to do a i uh, think at some point it's going to be inevitable yeah. kind of like thanos it's inevitable but yeah if we can as long as we can because the mouse sues the mouse will sue us that's uh, not- I, I think we'd be fine as long as we don't like no you're right if we say anything negative we're going to get sued we say anything we get sued it's yeah. the mouse i'm okay with like i said pathfinder and then going to clancy brown going to a starship troopers which admittedly is a movie that i've never been super high on but i've uh I, it's a movie i like starship troopers holds a special place in my heart it came out in 1997 i was 13 14 years old my parents dropped me off at the movie theater I paid like $2.50, went to the theater and watched it by myself. It was my first rated R movie in the theater. I'm sorry, Josh. Your first time should have been better than that. (laughs) Dude, no. I was 13 or 14. I had (laughs) blood and guts and boobs. I was sold. (laughs) Come on. What more could a 13-year-old ask for, you know? (laughs) All right, well, guys, this was awesome. Well, no, this film was not awesome, but this was this awesome. This evening was awesome. This evening was awesome. Uh, and I can't wait to find out what we wind up watching next weekend. Uh, again, we've, we've got Carl Urban. We've got What's Your Name from Garn Girl. We've got, I think that's really it. I don't think anyone else in this film was in anything. Yeah, else. we, well, no, no, the, the, the one dude got killed on the shitter. He's been in a few things. He's always plays the bad guy, though, or the du- douchebag guy. But he's been in a lot. Till next time, guys. I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I've been Q. And this has been Fireside. Fire Pit, Tom. Fire Pit. Jesus Fire Christ. Pit. I'm the one who's drank a six-pack, and I remember the goddamn <laughs> name of the fucking podcast. All right. Good night, guys. Living Sacramento. Sacramento, there I go. Leaving Sacramento, out the street. Sacramento, there I go. They got some fat ass women <laughs> there, and rock is gonna just say no. <laughs> what a song, just say no. Well, I might take a plane, I might take a train. How do you people live here? You must be insane. I'm leaving Sacramento. What a song. Sacramento, I won't stay. Check this out, check this out. Check it out. But I'll be sure to come back when the Lakers beat the Kings in May. <laughs> I'll be sure to come back when the Lakers beat the Kings in May. Man, that's number one with a bullet. 